Hundreds of thousands of dollars may be left on the table for Metro Nashville every year, and it's through one of the city's biggest money makers. Golf is one of the more popular sports to find new life in the pandemic, but some say we're not doing enough to make the best of the few public courses you can play in Middle Tennessee. Investigative reporter Levi Ismail joins us now. And Levi, what sort of impact does this have on us losing out on the money? You know, all the money that comes through these courses, they make it back to the Metro General Fund, the same pot where our tax money helps to benefit the city as a whole. So you can see why some say it's irresponsible to leave any money on the table, especially if we can do something about it. Forgetting for a moment that the game is played much different now than it was in the 15th century, much of everything else stayed the same. Club meets ball, ball meets cup, eventually. But in the age of social distance, few sports found new life quite like this. Golf boomed in 2020, didn't slow down in 2021, and I don't think it's going to slow down in 2022. Joey Hickman has been a golf pro for 27 years. When we come down, we usually play the middle or the south. That is, if you can find the space. North, it's no one. secret Nashville is growing every day with people moving here from around the country. Let's say 10 out of 100 play golf. Where are they going to play? Waiting lists at virtually every private course in Middle Tennessee makes Nashville's public courses. Yeah, no, I suggest it to my two buddies that live closer. Well worth the 30 mile drive for Kyle Green. Especially considering what they charge to play here. Pretty competitive. Absolutely, very competitive. But Metro tells us that with the few people they have working, last call to rent a cart for 18 holes is 130. If you're playing nine holes, well, then the deadline is 430. That way they make sure they have all carts returned by the time they close at seven. Even though the sun may not set until 830 or later. Green says there's no question these hours have kept some from making the trip. It would probably deter me from playing if I didn't have access to a cart. Now you might ask how much of a difference a couple hours makes between 430 and seven o'clock when they close. Well, let's find out. Let's say you have two people per golf cart. That's $6 each, which brings the total to $12. They usually need about two golf carts per group. So now we're at $24. Now they can get about six groups per hour. So that's $144 times the two and a half hours we have left. So that brings the total to $360. Still following? Okay, multiply that by seven days in the week, 24 weeks for the peak season between April and September and between six courses. Now you have the total of $362,880. Now you do the same type of math, this time for green fees or the price of admission, and the total is $226,800. Which means Metro could be losing out on $589,680 in six months. So let's say it cost $50,000, $60,000 in increased pay to keep people here till whenever. For Hickman, that's an investment that just makes sense. If it means hundreds of thousands more in return, with every dollar going to the city's general fund to benefit countless Metro programs. Are we doing enough to bring in new employees to make the best out of these courses? If I thought they were failing because of lack of effort, I'd have an issue. There's no, it's not a lack of effort. John Holmes is the assistant park director for Metro Parks and oversees golf finances, where he says the starting pay for new hires much of last year was $8.25 per hour. They've since bumped that pay to $11. Why can't we pay them more to work we here? Are. Every year uh, we're, eva we're evaluating positions, evaluating salaries, and trying to stay competitive with other industries. But just down the road, on the same day as this interview, Metro HR Director Shannon Hall said she tried convincing Metro Parks Director Monique Odom to adjust what they paid their seasonal and part-time employees. I offered her my personal recommendation, which we did ask again this year, like we ask every single year. Do you want to update? Do you and the Board of Parks want to change the pay rate? And the response from Parks was no for this year. I mean, look at all the restaurants. They're having to pay more to get more help. I think you have to do that here. So you have full-time staff, mm -hmm. you have the seasonal folks, mm -hmm. you also have volunteers we working. Do. Okay. We do. They are allowed to have volunteers and what the volunteer does is if they work a certain number of hours, they get golf free for a week. Between all of that, there's still a hiring issue? Oh, definitely. We've never had the challenges that we've had this year with finding people. But when we asked around, 
people told us it's not just the pay they worry about. You could apply one day and wait nearly a month or even longer to get the job. It's Metro government and it, there, is a, there are processes that we have to follow and we're following them. It's a process that hasn't changed and some argue it's time for a new approach. Ultimately, we all want to find the best way to the green, even if some say it's harder than you think. I get that. I understand that. But from a golfer's perspective, and that's where I'm coming from, there's, there's revenue being left on the table. Those with Metro Parks say they were being mindful of their budget before considering a recommendation to increase the rate of pay. As for our numbers, they say it doesn't take into consideration weather and seasons. However, even if we cut the half a million dollar estimate in half, people say this is all money that could benefit the city. For News Channel 5 Investigates, I'm Levi Ismail.